There we go. We are back live on the River Thames. He says, I think we're back live on the River Thames. We are back live. Evening, everyone. We, uh, we just need to, I'm just going to check the volume. Says, right. I think we're back live on the River Thames. So I noticed that yesterday on the recording, um, <laughs> the camera really picks up the noise of the geese. Um, I'm just going to put the phone there. And slightly bit different today. Um, we go for. Uh, don't really everyone see it. Sweet corn. So we're going to start on corn today. My um, my boy's here again today, looking to try and catch a pike out the peg. Definitely took their spot. But the geese, then they can get fed. Shh. It's coming out of you then. Okay. Alright. Oh, the swans chasing them, look. <laughs> they're, they're, they're running from the swan. Oh, Let's move. <laughs> wow. Just let them all wow, look. Da, 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 da. The geese are trying to escape the swan. You coming out? So where my phone ends up in the Thames, this is. Just, uh, there you come then. Don't worry about my peg. Can I get my phone though, geese? That would be nice. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's all good, geese. Yeah, out the peg. Look at that. Imagine that in a match. The other two have legged it. Right. Good. There we go. Son. So now there's a dog. That, this one's there. Yeah. Sorry. It's alright mate. The geese are trying to escape the swan and now they're running they're running to your dog. The geese the geese are escaping the swan. <laughs> yeah, it seems so. Right, the drama. Fishing down the river. Right. <laughs> oh, no, well, don't worry about it. I do have water for you. Right, well, don't worry about it. What oh, the drama? The drama. Anyway, what was I saying? I plumbed it up. And, um, yeah, it's this deep. So, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven eyes, but I've noticed that where my trusty assistant has put my rod together. Yeah. Trusty assistant, you see the line's gone over the top of the rod. Huh? Yeah, I know. Yeah. So yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's a slight, it's like the lightest little bit of. Um, if you look in the bag, is that much of an issue for you? There's a cloth. So, where are we going? I'm going to fish a piece of corn today. I had those little chublets yesterday. I've got the rest of the maggot with me. But today, I'm going to feed some corn through the peg. See what happens. I can see actually. You can see that corn still cut. I'm looking at the corn and ignoring the bite I'm getting. So if you feel the need, then uh, you can want some <laughs> That was quite funny actually, those geese. We like that. So anyway, evening everyone. We are back down the Thames in the same peg that we were in yesterday looking to catch. You can see it's really clear. I can see that corn going down. I'm the same peg. A little bit more flow today. And I've switched the rod. The bite then. And I've switched the rod to my pellet waggler rod. Um, but we're stuck with the same, uh, the same reel. 
and that the aim today is to just try and see what this brings us in terms of fish so perch are off the menu bleak I expect are off the menu so let's see how we get on just using some corn I've got maggot if I need it oh, yeah. and that's a uh, perch on the spinner to the boy right on son yeah Too good. Show on the camera. Too good. Show the camera. You're on the camera now. There you go. Show the fish? No? Okay, there was a perch there. It wasn't a very good perch. Let's check that bait down. This is um, father and son fishing at its best. I'm going to just try and move that camera. It was a bit wonky last night. I'm aware of that. See if I can make it a bit better. But it's yeah, I think you have to remember it's it's deep here, you know. It is deep. Look at that. Another perch on the spinner. You know what I'm doing? Make show me up. But that's what it means now. That's underneath that. Yeah, it's where they hit it. Oh, there we go. Got a camera. There we go. Yeah, lovely. Because yesterday I didn't get No, no, I did get one. Yeah. So if you're joining us, we've just popped out uh, for a little evening session. Come down the River Thames. We were here yesterday. We're fishing the same peg. Yesterday we fished with um, maggot and today I brought down corn we've still got some maggot um, but a good day yesterday there was plenty of fish to be caught um, bleak, dace, roach, perch little chublets and my son hooked a couple of pike so we've um, scooted off down here again today he's brought the spinning rod back I've brought the stick float rod back um, but I'm feeling corn today. That will give us a go and see if we can catch something of a slightly different quality. That's the plan, anyway. Sure, if that was a fish or whether that was just dragging slightly on the bottom. So I've no idea how much corn to feed. There is a tree um, downstream to my left. You can see it just over that way, um, and I, you know, it's hanging nicely into the river. A, a good. Uh, 15 odd foot out into the river that tree hangs so I expect it to be holding fish I wonder if a heavier bait would draw more fish out of there today I'm not too sure we will see what's the time now half six we'll see how we go I'll scale the bait back now to just a few grains. But I will just put some in every cast, I think. See, there's a bite. Oh, came off. That's good. And the goal here is to try and learn a little bit about fishing this river. Quite a few people that walk around, so I want to come down with a minimal amount of gear, make it easy. 
Just got a couple of rods landing there. Got some bait. Little bag with some terminal tackle in it. We've got a landing uh, mat and forceps. If we catch a pike, we've got to do some a little bit of work to get the hook out. Try and make sure you've got a bend in that because if it's direct to the yeah, it's direct to the spinner and a pike hits it. It's under, you know, a lot of tension. Okay. Is that camera straight? I've got a slight lean. Next to no flow, got a boat coming through. Plenty of geese. Yeah, can you move that spinner just in case they jump up quick and or, you know. Just hold on to the spinner. Just have hold of the spinner. Then there's no danger of any problem here. Yeah? Deal with the serious waves. Yeah, I think they're wary of the boat. So everyone's having a good day. Glad you could join us down the river for the, the next episode of Father and Son have no idea what they're doing fishing the River Thames. <laughs> it's quite a long title that. Did you? Try and aim that a little bit higher, you know? Let go a little bit earlier. That's it, that's it. Okay. Okay, so that's definitely a, that's a better fish. That's the best fish I've had yesterday. Oh, it's a chub. Look at that. There we go. Uh, no, I don't so. I don't. It's my first fish chat, I don't remember. It's important. It's a lovely chat, that is. Huh? There we go. I had a bite and I couldn't stop. Okay. There we go. Just move that out. Can you hold that for a second for me? get a better thumbnail for today's stream. There we go. Just click that and I'll be able to see. Can't see at all. So yeah, lovely chub. I'd imagine that fish may never have been hooked. So the thought I had in my mind of can we be more selective and fish a different bait to make that work? The answer is yes. Very happy with that. So we'll get some more corn in. Bear in mind, we know absolutely nothing about this stretch of the river. Um, we just come in and fishing it. We know there's, we knew there was some chub. Um, and my, you know, basic understanding of fish in the river says that 
there should be fish sitting under that tree. Um, is that a fish or the bomb? So, so that, that clutch is set way too loose, that, you know. They're way too loose. Way too loose. Right, now pull it and hold on to the, you've got to hold on to the spool and break it or pull it off. Yeah, you might have straightened one of the hooks on the spinner to just check it. It's got caught somehow. If, the hooks, if it looks okay, then carry on. Take the weed off it though, son. No fish wants to... You sure? Oh, the feathers. That's a better cast. So we're we're rocking tonight. There's no flow in the river to speak of. And he's had a chub and a couple of perch. Uh, was that my first fish? No, I think it maybe it was my first fish on the corn. So the rig's the same as yesterday, three pounds on sweet corn, I don't think, no. So the rig, um, no, something, I hooked something and it came off. And it shouldn't be a perch eating sweet corn. So um, same rig as yesterday, three pound main line, um, 013 bottom, size 18, uh, SLWG from Guru, L2BB, and stick float. That's the rig. We had a couple of little indications and then a couple of good bites. I'm actually thinking that because of the weight of that bait, I should be chucking it downstream a little bit more on the basis that there's no flow on the river. Or no flow to speak of. This is where some river fishing experience would be useful. Okay, nothing on that that little trot down. Go back to the sweet one to go. Have you, um, no, so. Three pound chub's mouth is going to be about as big as that. So yeah, the speed that corn is dropping. Ah, oh, okay, so there's a little bit more flow. but it's a little bit further out. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to just make a... 
a little choice here to fish a little bit further out, I think, and get in the flow a little bit more. I plumbed it, didn't I? You just let that settle before you cast over it. Let's fish a little bit further out. So we're fishing <clears throat> it's about a rod length out now. So 11 foot off of the tip. So now we're into actual flow of the river, so that's worth remembering. happy with fishing where I was because it was more in line with this you know near bank feature but now I've gone further out I'm more into the flow of the river I've got less view of the depth though that's a bite though Right, no way down there. No. Can you no, can you bring that in? Don't try and put your rod tip down. You've got 18 pound braid. 18, 20, 30 pound braid and a 30 pound trace. If you hook that canoe, you're going in. Mm. So just because it's not gonna break. That's why, son. Huh? Well, you, with what? Scissors. Well, if you've got scissors in your hand, just in case that happens. No. So, if the canoeists come down, will you please reel it in? <laughs> Everyone on stream can watch you get pulled in, like you're a wind, like you're um kite surfing, not kite surfing, wakeboarding. <coughs> get dragged along with a rod in your hand. If I have another little couple of runs through here then I will try and re-establish the depth. by the tree. A couple, couple of perch and a chub currently. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We fished it yesterday, caught a load of bleak roach. Yeah, we just got some bleak there, we've got maggot. Yeah, I've got some from yesterday. Bleak roach, perch, 
You've got that same snag. He hooked a couple of little jack pike. Yeah. Oh, wow. um, so yeah, it's all going on if you fish maggot, I think. Yeah, I think it is, yeah. And then, it's, it's quite a strong current, isn't it? Uh, I don't know what's that. Like. It's you know, slow through here. Yeah. Um, you can just about take the stick folk through, but yeah, I think you can be more selective. But yeah, over the course of an hour, we caught plenty of fish yesterday on maggot, so oh, did you? Yeah. I thought we'll come back today and try yeah, just yeah. fish some corn and we've got a few little chublets, little ones. Yeah, yeah. So I was happy that there was something bigger somewhere, so. Just running through. A lot easier there. I've just got this view of. Can you be really sensible about what you're doing with that? Yeah. Um, yeah, I've run through really quick on the corn. I suspect I'm not on the bottom. I'm just going to have another run through where I was originally feeding, where I caught that chub. Okay, son, you're very chatty all of a sudden today. Um, so we'll have another just little run through here. And I'm not too sure, I'll switch to maggot, start feeding maggot on this short line. Or we'll switch over to maggot on the longer line. Plumb the depth. Which I think is what I'm going to do. A little bit further out. Oh, very comfortable with the thought that that chub is not the only chub at this part of the river. What do you think, chat? Replumb it, switch to maggot, stay on the short line, go on the long line. What do we think? I think we're going to plumb, plumb the depth a little bit further out. Why is that? Have you taken the box out? Son? No. Oh. I'm going to have a chuck in that peg down there if you fancy it. No, I Okay, it's about another foot deep. If I go further, I'm going to stay on the short line, I think. I had that one chub there. I'm just off the bottom. I think I'm going to stick with that too. Just so I can sort of tick it off in my mind, you know? I'm not fishing a match, I don't mind putting a little bit of time on this line. Just see what happens.
it's just into the sort of area where I've had the previous bites, but I think probably about there is where that sweet corn's just getting down to the bottom. You run the risk of um, flicking the braid over the top of the rod. Okay. Okay. Can you? Don't worry about them. The swan is effectively uh, acting as a sheepdog to these geese on this river today. I think they've had some sort of disagreement between the pair of them. And um, so the swan is taking some dislike to the geese. I don't know why. But I think that should be just about running through on the bottom now. I'll stick feeding corn. You could well be feeding far too much, I'm not sure. That's what these little river sessions are about. They're about learning. The do's and don'ts. Yeah, the goo the swan is absolutely chasing those geese. But now the um, the geese backup teams arriving. think about it, my son is probably completely skylining my peg by standing up next to me, but this water's really clear, isn't it? I can't see the Huh? Yeah, it's not quite how that works though, is it? He's convinced that if he can't see the fish, the fish can't see him. The other side of me. Thanks. Can you fix the lure first? Can you fix the lure? Fix the lure that's dangling around on the rod before you then start picking up the landing net. You gotta watch out for dogs and all sorts running around. So if you join me, uh, if you just joined us, I should say, we're here, then uh, welcome. We're just having a little second day session down the river. I wanted to come and um, fish the same peg again, but with uh, some sweet corn today to see if I could work out if there's any chub. And, and the answer was yes, we've had one chub. My son's had a couple of perch on the spinner. I've got maggot. Um, that we were using yesterday. It's rapidly turning to caster. Um, but I said I'll give this until um, about an hour. And then I might change to MAGA if we're not catching. Yesterday we, <coughs> we caught a little bit of everything yesterday. We had some bleak, 
bit of roach and perch, little chublets, um, a dace, got a dace actually, and then he hooked a couple of little jack pikes, which he's after again on the spinner. And that was a bite right down the end of that. Nowhere near where my bait can be. Um, I'm just fishing a single grain of corn. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm just feeding a, you know, five or six bits per cast. I've no idea what volumes I should be feeding. <coughs> For all I know, there's a big barbel going to come up in a minute and um, give me an interesting fight on three pound line. But so that was a bite. That was definitely a bite. So I'm just letting it run through. I'm not trying to hold it back or, you know, hold it back, let it go. I'm not too worried about that sort of technique at the moment. I'm just trying to focus on what am I feeding, just having some thoughts about what's in the river in front of me. fishing this line versus different lines. You know, those sorts of things. <clears throat> and then it's gonna be um, just a little process of elimination, really, I think. Try some different things over different days and if the river stays consistent, you know, and trying to work out some things that work and don't. I was saying yesterday, it's a long time since I fished a stick float down a river. I wouldn't say I was ever any good at it. That line is definitely further out than where I was fishing earlier. I'm just going to try and... I don't know that because there's some flow, you know. Let's try and just bring it back in to where it was before. Which I think was more like there. And then run it down this, this line.
Is that a bite then? Don't know if that was a bite. Yeah, maybe we lost sight of it under the shadow of the tree. Or the reflection of the tree, I should say. I don't expect that goes any further. So, I'm going to make a switch. So I'll give it longer, but I'm going to switch to my go. change now and then see if we start catching loads of silvers again like yesterday. And maybe it'll work out if I feed maggot and then maybe that will be attracting more fish in the peg and then switch to corn for a better quality fish. I'm not sure. So there's a bite straight away on maggot. So there's certainly lots of silvers, I think, in this in this river, in this part of this river, for sure. leaked out as I did yesterday but we'll see another bark straight away oh there's a bit coming down the boat now so I've got to catch something it's a mixture of caster and maggot that I'm throwing in the casters the maggots all turning to caster so I had to come down today, I told myself to use it all up. I'll probably find out. <clears throat> Actually, probably throwing in maggots is the worst thing I could probably do. Maybe I'm just attracting more bleak to the peg, who knows? But catch a fish for the people on the boat. A little bleak. That yeah, looks a little bit like a Prosecco cruise going down the river. straight away. I'm going to shallow up maybe in a minute and just see how far, you know, how deep those bleak are. Actually I'm not, because they're intercepting that bait relatively quickly. So they can't be, they've got to be mid-water. I would think. Fish on the end of there, I think, putting that along. Any joy, son? One part. Mm, fun. Oh, much better than yesterday, then. Do something with that. You're not fishing on, you know, you're not fishing a, a ledge, you know what I mean? Just let that spinner just tumble down the river. I can't 
massive stick. Sticks don't um, sticks don't count. Just so you just so you know. Hmm? Uh, it is a bleak. I'll show you this video later tonight so I'm arguing about whether it's a bleak or a chub. So if you just joined us, welcome. We're just having another little evening session down the River Thames, my son and I. He's um, thrashing a spinner around next to me. And I've had one chub. And now I'm catching a bunch of bleak because I've changed to maggot. If you want to do that, why don't you change it to a jig head? Well, if you want, if you want to do that, if you want to fish like that. A spinner's not the, the lure to use. <clears throat> it says a uh, pro lure angler, but I am. If you want to fish like that. Change to a jig head or one of those soft plastics. Huh? Yeah, the box is there and all the jig heads are in there and all the. You just unhook that from the trace and then swap it over for something else. Just keep chucking a few bits of corn in, I think. I'm not going to stop it entirely. Just... It's here, son. Come behind and sort yourself out a lure. Come behind? Well, what, what are you trying to do? You need to, you need to... What's this in your hand that means you can't put the rod down? Okay. There we go. So, we'll get there. You are a hmm, chat. I'm not sure. Is that a bleak or is that a dace? I'm not convinced. I think it's a big bleak, like a really big bleak. I think it's a bleak. By the way, its bottom lip goes up. Let me know, chat. I have to look at it, look it up after, look up, look up, look it up afterwards. If someone's watching it in a bit, that video, check it in the comments. Bleak or dice? I'm not sure. But yeah, they're all up in the water, these fish. But then your question confuses me, son. We've been, we've been fishing now for ages. You can just clip that on the... On the you need to clip that on the whole on the jig head. Is it clipped on? There you go. <coughs> Throw it around, jig it around. Huh? It's because it's heavier than the spinner. Let it sink. 
and then no, then give it a jig. Yeah. Don't go so fast. You'll reel it in much quicker. You could have gone a bit slower. So yeah, I've got the. So I think those bleak are. I think they are about two foot under the under the water. Those bleak. It's probably a load of <coughs> bleak anglers watching this going, that's exactly where bleak sit, what are you doing? Do you know nothing about river fishing? Let it sink some. No, you're not, you're not going to do that because that's how you get the, the rig tangled around the end of the rod and if you do go and hook a fish that's the top of the rod smashed off yeah I think maybe you need to just sit down for a minute and just have a go at this in a minute Certainly plenty of bleak to be had. If you had that in your hand all the time, it wasn't in the river. Well, I kind of let some line out, not pull the rod back. <laughs> My peg's been invaded by geese. Come on, let's go. Goose is coming out. Stand back off the, they want to come out. Oh, I'll move again for the geese, I think. They want to come out, I think. Yeah, I think they do. Oh, we're, gonna, we're gonna swim off now. These ones do, I think. Come on. You can see that chat. Hey, um, <laughs> whilst, the, whilst the seats, the steps are convenient for me to sit on, or for us to sit on, they're also very convenient for the uh, geese. They're up there, they'll make it. It's also the easiest place for the geese to get out the peg, look, out the river. Yeah. There you come. Wait. There you go. Right. I can't like that. There's something nice about <clears throat> Except in the fact that the geese have priority in the peg <laughs> over us. It's 
So, solid but bleak. Same as yesterday. It went straight under the steps. No, it just went down. You can't see it. Oh, you see that big swirl? That's like a pike. Just hit it. So, jig head goes down, and then you jig it up, and it goes. Then you let it go down, and then you jig it up, and let it go down. Do you wind? No. Well, you well, yeah, you have to wind to a certain degree, but you don't wind it in. You're jigging it up to create this motion, like a big M, like a constant M motion. But but not. You're not striking. As if you're trying to hook a pike, it needs to be a bit more refined than that. Uh, so then, just I think nothing's going to work because you're not thinking about. See how that went then? Yeah, and then let it go. Okay. So you pull it up, and then you let it go. Yeah, they do. Just let those two geese get out as well. That fella from yesterday. Right, geese, well, if you don't want to come, then that's fine. Whoa. I think, is your, is your head in it today, son? Or is your head not in it? Okay. No, I don't think it is. So, um, I'll just have a quick chuck with this rod that he's got in his hand. So here? So, okay. So, technique, technique is king. Can you stand on that side of me? So. So it's gonna sink down. Yeah, the river's going to push it that way. All right, and I'm going to just give it a little flick. So it grabs up, and then I'm going to let it hit the bottom again, and I'm going to flick it up again. Let it go down again. I'm going to flick it up again. I'm going to flick it up again. I'm going to flick it up again. So that's how it's going to work, yeah? I'm not winding all the time. If I cook a pike now, he's going to be furious with me, just so everyone knows. So, yeah, you got that? Even then, I think I might be doing it a bit too fast. But don't, don't underestimate the, the value in doing this at the edge. Yeah? We know that pike hit this, hit the bait yesterday, right underneath here. We've got the peg so the geese can come out again. It's okay, I've got it. Just hold, it. hold that for a second. Hold that for a second. Most of the geese come out of the river. So, slow that motion down. When you pull it up, it's going to come up and it's coming up seven, eight foot. And it needs to drop down seven, eight foot. Same dog again. Okay, now I'm going to have a couple of chucks down to the next peg.
Well, I, I have said that fishing a stick float and maggot is going to catch you more fish than fishing artificial lures. Yeah, but oh, that's a choice you need to make. Okay. So you could try a different one. You could put one of those. You could put one of those um, plugs on. Now we have lots to choose from. But keep it safe. Keep the box closed. I don't want a dog's nose going in and getting a have a look on it for sure right where are we chat fleet fishing i think aren't we that's what was going on oh don't change it to another spinner why don't you change it to one of those one of these mm, okay all right I don't know why we're having that conversation. So, I let you make your own mind up. Okay, but can you go to the other peg, please? Yeah. Yeah, take the landing net. Be listening out for if I call you back. I think I'm only going to catch bleak. So. <laughs> I think it would be fine. So bleak, 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 bleak. So still feed that. I'll still feed some corn, I think. Next job, I'd, next job on the list, I think, is to buy some, buy a sack load of hemp and um, start cooking it up, I guess. Got a perch. Nice fish. Try and get something for a thumbnail. I'm going to just change those maggots and I'm going to cast it out just a little bit further, run it through a bit further out in the river. A few maggots, a bit of corn. I seem to remember doing this a long time ago. It's coming back to me a little bit. I'm feeding multiple baits in the peg at the same time. I don't know how far. <clears throat> and look, straight away that's gone. See, I think it's solid with bleak in the upper layers. I don't think those four number fours sink that quickly in that river. So that's back fishing rod length and a half out into the flow of the river. I'm not fishing on the bottom that much, I know. Those bleak are intercepting that as it goes along. <clears throat> Sorry, as it goes down, I think the, the bleak are up in the top layers of the water. 
I do know some people that know some I know some very good bleak anglers and I know some people that know some amazing bleak anglers <laughs> so I will ask a few questions about the behaviours of this fish Plenty of fish to be caught, you know, really enjoying that that aspect of it. Let's put three mangos on. Let's see what happens with that. I switched rods so I couldn't I couldn't handle the weight of that XMA last night. Well, I could handle it but I was just like no. So I've sacrificed the two foot of distance. I switched it for my pellet, pellet waggler rod and now I put that out a bit further. I need a 15 foot rod. Right then. Keep feeding this inside line. Just trot that through on that further line. Getting bites, I think it's solid with fish. The only thing I'm, so that hasn't happened yet that I'm slightly surprised of is I haven't had a pike go for one of these bleakers I bring it in. Not that I'm aware of yet anyway. Let's move that camera up a little bit. getting bites. It's a bite every run through on maggots. I'm going to keep putting some corn in. And I'll, um, <clears throat> I'll switch to another bit of corn in a minute. Bleak absolutely smashed those maggots, and I think you know that's one of the telltale signs of bleak. I need to do a little bit of homework. At the moment, I'm sacrificing educating myself to actually the fishing instead. So, on the job experience is what we're going for currently. if that's the same group of geese. No, it's a different group of geese, so we might have to move out the peg again in a minute. So I'm just running that piece of corn down there. I've had one decent chub, which is the first fish of the session, really. and fished corn for quite a while, no more no more chub or fish off of that, so the odd bite type of things. We've switched to maggot and caught a load of bleak again. 
instead of perch. So I'm just happy to just flick back to corn again. Have a run through on corn. See if anything's sitting at the back of the peg. I can't believe that there's any bait getting down, any maggots getting down to the bottom with the way the bleak are hitting the rig on the drop. I don't think there's any um, any bait getting down. Let's have another run through. Those geese are looking as if they want to come out. I say that they're looking as if it's as if they're looking at me. Right now, this one's making a move this way is this the first one that's saying you need to get out of our way don't eat my stick float goose you don't want to do that there's a fish finally so what are you little chub Little baby chub with my piece of sweet corn in your mouth. That's what we're looking for. Plenty of those. So I'm going to move. I think these geese want out. I think they're being patient. They're coming out, not coming out. Thinking about it. Coming out, I think. It's taking a while, the stragglers at the back are um, moving forward. This is quite cool. <laughs> Getting kicked out the peg. You can't sit there, geese. If you're coming out, come out. Yeah, stop talking about it. You can all come out now. People talk about ducks in their peg, fishing the waggler. Look at that lot. Slowly moving forward. There we go. They're off. Go. Out they come. As soon as this first one commits and comes out, then we'll be all right. Any danger I've got is if they stop and see my bait. There we go. A bit like tourists, really. I move back, I'm not sure they're completely comfortable. It's a bit like tourists that have come down to have a little look down the river. Like a little guided tour, you know. <clears throat> and we've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. Two, four, six, eight, ten, thirty geese. <coughs> I think they'll come out the river and just go for a little sleep on the grass behind to the right of me. actually right a few more and then we can get fishing again
Yeah, nice one's out. We're done. Corn. Is that the same group of geese, son? Or is it a. Oh, uh, yeah, that's written off. Just. No, well. This stuff. But. Oh, okay. You, uh, yeah. Yeah, did you wet the braid? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you can cut it and pull it all off. The stuff that you've got in your hand is, is no good. If it's trashed at the reel, it's trashed at the reel. You've got to cut it back to the reel. Yeah, you've got to just put that down. Get that down. Get this down or off. Right, get it off your hand. Right, now just get the scissors and cut that off first and then get that safe. So it doesn't end up in trousers. Yeah, now. You gotta go back to the reel and you've got to take that braid all the way back. Huh? Huh? Yeah, it's because it's you've done that, you know, where you've I've, I've talked to you about <clears throat> having the braid too loose and it goes around the bottom of the reel. It's a symptom of you jerking it up and down and then winding and you've wound when it's loose and that's what's caused the problem. Right on corn then. So we'll stay on corn for a bit I think. Um, bleak, want to chuck on maggot. Here and or further out. Um, so I've just switched back to another piece of to a piece of cord. I've had one little baby chublet. Uh, you put it all in the bag, so we take it all home. Lovely boats that come down this part of the Thames, just realised you're all looking at the floor. Um, yeah, some lovely boats that... Is that bomb? Sure. Some stunk of diesel, that car, that boat. Got all the way back to the reel. See, I'm very tempted that the um, the next trip in this peg is going to be with. bucket's going to be full of ground bait. Then we're going to try and learn to fish the feeder on this bit of the fish the feeder but there's nowhere to put a rod rest in here. So I'm not too sure it's the right place for it. So I'm now just chucking loads of bait in, um, corn and um, maggot. Now that the maggots aren't getting anywhere really, the bleak will be picking all them off. So we'll keep with the corn going in then to feed any better fish that may be sitting further down. Really? 
either in front of me at the bottom or you know to the left just got stuck on like the only bit oh that was a bite stuck on the only bit of weed there i can hear the swan coming along that probably all his geese mates have disappeared after he's been chasing them around the river. So we're going to up the feed now. Is it 20 to 8? It's up the, up the pace of the feed. I'm convinced there's a lot of fish here. And let's try and... Um, Try and draw some more fish into the peg. Okay, family swans coming down. They're doing very well actually. A pair of swans and four cygnets. That are Nearly lost their grey feathers, so they've done well to keep them going. Fish down at the end of the peg there, that was a bite. I'm going to just cast that over there now. Speed this process up. Still put the bait in front of me. Where's the... Um, this is too tight. Where's the orange? I think of time putting the loops through. Right. Make a loop. Push it back on itself. Go behind it. Make a loop. Push it back on itself so it goes round through a loop. Pinch the bit that comes round the front in these fingers and take that bit behind it. And go from the back. Grab the loop. And then put it through. And that makes it totally done. Could you lift the rod up and sort of move it away? Is it? Bite further out on corn there. Can you lift the rod up and stop trying to climb over me? That'll be so much easier for yourself. Sorted. Live fishing action, me and my son. <laughs> run that piece of corn further out again you put the loop through the trace loop and then you put the end of the trace through the mainline loop right so you put the braid through the swivel and then you put the end of the trace through the braid
Yeah, we sort the box out. It's your responsibility. No, it's your responsibility. Sort it out. No, you need to do it, son. Mm. So, wind that in, put it safe, and then sort that out, please. <coughs> put that safe and sort that out, please. Thrill of live streaming, eh? <laughs> this isn't a this isn't a fishing live stream. This is a this is a parenting live stream. This is what this is turned into today. I thought that maybe this would have been more effective. I don't really know what I was due to expect, you know. Maybe I shouldn't think like that, you know. Catch some fish and then come down and chuck some sweet corn in and catch a trouble day. That's not really probably how this is going to work. But there was certainly better fish in this peg. It's, it's that. It's where you slack where you wiggle that the way you do that's where you slacken that line off that braid off and if you wet that braid now oh. well you, you need to wet the braid we talked about wetting the braid yeah <coughs> because you're going to get uh, more issues with the braid okay. there's a bottle of water in the bag I didn't even it means make the braid wet or you can just hold the rod and dunk the reel in the river it'll be fine So what happens with braid is it flies off the reel a little bit easier and then you get a little loop that ends up on the spool and then when you cast again that loop will pull another couple of loops off and then you'll get that wind knot in the braid that's where those problems come from back on the bleak back on the maggot So you need to try and keep a tight line on that braid and you've got to also keep an eye on it on the reel. You've got to watch it, son. If you see a little loop, you've got to cast the loop out or pull the loop out. What's this? The duck turned up. careful with that duck, it's racing around all over the place. geese playing with us tonight are they jumping back in the river and then coming back out again and then jumping back in the river again <laughs> two four six eight ten twelve forty six there's only 16 geese there but 30 got out of the river last time let's try a cast on the hook
Um, son, son, son. If if there was an issue with you skylining the peg, standing there is is. Look at what. Is there? I want there to be a pipe, just so you stop fishing. <laughs> yeah, I'm not... They're, um, they're messing about them, geese. Huh? Yeah, you're going to have to wait. No, please don't. So that discussion about should you cast any geese or not, the answer is no. Is there, are those, uh, I think that's the same set of geese. Oh, Sam, are those other geese, are they still up on the grass bank or is this the same lot? They've jumped in again. <laughs> well then, I'm not moving geese. You're gonna have to go away. Take a seat, Sam. I'm just persevering with this piece of corn. Just trying it down the peg. Contemplating how a better way of fishing this peg may be. Might just be the different setup would be better. You know, a little short whip. But catching loads of bleak is not really what I want to do, but it's a little think about different methods I could use. Duck, do not eat my piece of sweet corn, please. Do not dive for that duck. Do not dive for that, please. It's getting a bit 
tricky with this little duck. Now the geese are moving in at a rate of speed. Close to calling it there, I think, tonight. Caught ourselves a chub. We know the bleak are clearly here in numbers. I think I had another bite then. Oh. Is that a bite or is that just dragging into the bottom there? I'm not sure. I can just get another couple of trots out of this. Uh-oh. 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 <laughs> Geese like the sweet corn. <laughs> I'm not moving, Geese. I'm not moving. I'm fishing. I've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. It's the same It's the same 30 geese. So they all climbed out. They walked along the bank, and they all jumped back in the river again. Or oh, something spooked them back in the river again. Huh? 19 geese here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 2, 4, 5. Somewhere between what you reckon, what I reckon is the right answer. They can hear the dog running around behind. She's spooking them. Oh, now they know the sound of sweet corn. So I think we're going to call it a day. Uh, we caught some chub, chub, loads of bleak, a few perch. Bleak. Yeah, they're about that big. Yeah, yeah. No proper fish. Bleak is the smallest fish you'll catch in a river. About that big. It's um. Is that quite clean here then? Hmm. Clean. Well, it's clean when Thames water don't decide to make it not clean. <coughs> no, it's all right. There's um. There's plenty of people go open water swimming in it. But you know you know the water authorities are having Yeah, but the the water authorities are having what 600 accidental spillages a day. Accidental. Yeah. Did you hear that many accidents uh, I don't manage I don't manage a Victorian pipe network though. And And that's what they're doing. So a little fish has grabbed that now cuz that's moving too fast for the flow, yeah. Yeah, let me give it a second, I'll show you a bleak. It's off. You fish yourself? <laughs> Race cars then. <laughs> Have a good day. All right, I think we'll finish on a bleak now.
Hmm? Yeah, the case is complete. Should run after him, take this fish to him and say that's a Blake, my dad said. It's a big old bleak that is. It's alright. Just have to lay on there. Hold that out. Need a better thumbnail. That should be about right. I don't know if bleak eat pallet but to come up the stairs next to me. So I think we'll have one more bleak to finish and uh, that'll be it for the day. So what, son? end on a bleak to finish today's session there we go right thank you for joining us we have to little, have a little think about what sort of fish we're going to try and catch out of this peg and how to do it most efficiently um, but thanks for joining I hope you enjoyed it I hope you enjoyed the interesting little bit of banter between the, my son and I and um, I'll catch you on the next one have a good evening see you later